drones. From just being stupid toys a few years back, these drones are now an essential part of almost every film production, and high quality portable drones are now available at very cheap prices. And particularly for me, the Mavic 2 Pro drone was a big revolution because this was the first time I felt I could have a drone this size, which I could put in my backpack and use it for bigger production without feeling like the image quality was a little bit too bad. I also had the Mavic 1 uh, and I, I felt like the image quality wasn't really up there and that it really didn't match the bigger cameras. But with the Mavic 2, the image quality is fantastic. And for me, as a time-lapse photographer, I particularly like the hyperlapse function, which I'm gonna talk about now. Hyperlapse function means that the drone is moving at a steady rate slowly through the air while it's taking pictures at a set interval. And this is the same idea as with regular time mass photography. And you compile these images into a video file where everything is moving a lot faster than in real time. And this opens up new possibilities both for time lapse photography and drone photography. So let's have a look at how you can take amazing hyperlapse videos with your Mavic 2 Pro. The first thing you need to do is of course to find a suitable place and time for your video. And remember to find a place where you are allowed to fly and that you're following the rules of your country. Uh, it's also important to not fly too close to the foreground because uh, the drone is not able to move at perfectly steady rate. So uh, if you are too close to a foreground, you are gonna get the sort of parallax effect as you can see in this example. It's also important to find a day when it's not too much wind outside because of course the drones are in the air so they're gonna be quite sensitive to wind and you're gonna get very shaky footage and you're gonna get even more of that parallax effect. So try to find a windless day, that's your best bet. Because your drone has limited battery capacity, um, you are not gonna have the longest time lapses. They're gonna be approximately 20 minutes max. So this means that you need to find a subject that is moving quite quickly. So for example, with clouds, if you're going on a uh, day when there is not much clouds moving, there are very still, very high clouds, you are not gonna get a time lapse effect at all. So try to find maybe some lower clouds which are moving a bit faster and that way you can get more of that time loss effect in your hyperlapses. So let's have a look at the settings. First, we need to put our camera settings. If you want the best post-processing possibilities, you should set the image quality to raw. Set your white balance, and if you're shooting a scene with constant light, set your camera to manual. Your ISO should ideally be as low as possible, as the image gets quite noisy fast if you increase the ISO. Then it's your aperture. I find f2.8 to be okay, but f4 seem to be a little bit sharper. And then set your shutter speed accordingly. You can also change the shutter speed and aperture with your remote controller while you're shooting the hyperlapse. Preferably change the shutter speed though, not the aperture, as this can create flicker that is difficult to remove. If you're using an ND filter, you can also get some motion blur during daytime to, for example, cars. Depending on your condition though, I would not go longer than maximum a second, otherwise you might get blurry images. If you're doing a sunrise or a sunset hyperlapse, just set it to aperture priority mode. From my experiences, this works very well. To set focus, I like to click it to manual focus, MF, and click the infinity button once, and it should be set. Now let's head into hyperlapse mode, which is where you'll be setting your interval and your motion you'll have four different modes down at the bottom. The first one is called free. This lets you manually drive the drone wherever you want while doing the hyperlapse. The only time I use this is if I want to take a static hyperlapse from the sky, which can be quite cool. The second one is circle. This lets you, as the name implies, circle around an object. Just drag a rectangle around the object on the screen to circle around it and set the speed and the interval. The third one is course lock. 
This is similar to circle in the way that you lock onto an object, but this time you will move in a straight line instead of a circle. I also like to use this mode in order to go straight forward uh, without locking onto a particular subject. The last one is the waypoint mode, which seems to be the most popular one and certainly the one I use the most. And this mode gives you the most versatility. So basically you set keyframe, uh, DJI calls them waypoints, and the drone will move between these. I usually just use two waypoints, but you can set more if you want to. So fly to your start point and click the plus icon. Then fly to your end point and click the plus again. You can change altitude and camera direction, making it possible to do some really interesting moves. And when you start your hyperlapse, the Mavic will fly back to its start point. If you want to save some time and battery, you can set your aim points first, then fly to your start point and click the in order button so that it says reversed. One disadvantage with the waypoint method is that you need to have a pretty big distance between each waypoint in order to get the hyperlapse of any decent length, as it seems like the drone has a minimum speed that it has to travel. So make sure that your waypoints are separated far enough. When it comes to interval, I usually set it quite short, about two to four seconds. If I then need to make it faster, I just speed it up in post. And the video length, I like to set about 10 seconds because I like those really long hyperlapses. If you want them to be shorter and faster, feel free to do so. And then it's just click start and wait. And once you're finished, the Mavic will automatically compile a video for you. If you want to do it the easy way, just use that video. But if you want to really get those amazing hyperlapses, you should do a bit of post-processing. I explained my complete workflow, which is the same for drone hyperlapses as for regular timelapses, uh, in my master timelapse course. So you can see the workflow there. But the very quick overview is to import your photos into Lightroom, work together with LR timelapse if you have some changing light in your scene and if you need to deflicker, then export those photos out of Lightroom and import it into After Effects as a sequence where you apply warp stabilizer. And voila, you have a perfectly smooth drone hyperlapse. So that was it for this very quick tutorial. I might be making more of this in the future. I was wondering, uh, I haven't seen so many uh, really stunning drone hyperlapses yet. So if you have made some really cool ones, you can comment down below and show me. Okay, see you next time, bye.